Right, let's talk about the check-in and homework questions in Lesson 313. So the first one, it's important to read this little paragraph here, so let's read it together. It says, sometimes when we talk about potential energy, it's not entirely clear what we mean by it. It's not just the potential to have energy. It is real energy. It's potential the same way that gravitational potential energy is potential because of its location. In the case of gravitational potential energy, the location that's important is relative to the Earth, assuming that the object is somewhere close to Earth. It's possible to have gravitational potential energy even if the object is not near Earth. Then it would be gravitationally attracted to whatever the biggest mass nearby is. Another way to think about that is an object has gravitational potential energy because of its location in the gravitational field of another massive object, usually Earth. With chemical potential energy, it's also about the location of a particle within a field. This time, instead of a gravitational field created by mass, we're talking about an electric field caused by a charge. So two hydrogen atoms are attracted to each other because their protons attract the other atoms' electrons. They're also repelled by each other because their electrons repel each other's other electrons. So there are two competing interactions going on here into forming a bond. So it says rewrite a summary of the energy story of bringing two hydrogen atoms together, um, including this idea of a location in a field. So you could say something like if atoms are really far apart, the positive charged nucleus of hydrogen atom number one isn't able to attract the negatively charged electron of the other atom because they're just too far away. But if the atoms are too close together, the positively charged nuclei just repel each other. So there's this sweet spot where the two hydrogen atoms are a perfect distance apart in their electric field. And so the formation of this bond allows for the atoms to exist in a lower possible potential energy state and release energy. Then it asks you to actually draw a picture of a lithium atom and a fluorine atom and try and write a story about what would be happening if they came close enough together to form a bond. It says this time, remember, it's an ionic bond that where an electron is transferred to another atom. So they're not sharing atoms. It says think about how your energy story is going to be different. So here I have my lithium atom giving its electron to the, the fluorine atom. And now what's holding them together is these opposite charges. So this is the lowest possible potential energy state for the two. It's a little bit different because these atoms are not overlapping like the hydrogen atoms were. Imagine if you suffer a horrific burn deep in your skin. What is actually happening to the chemical bonds? Well, it takes energy to break a bond. So when thermal energy from the fire is transferred to those chemical bonds in your carbohydrates and your fat molecules, the atoms move faster and faster and they eventually break apart, which breaks those bonds and causes a lot of damage. So breaking a chemical bond actually releasing energy is something that you may have thought before, but that's not right. It takes energy to break a bond, just like it took fire to break the bonds of your fat and carbohydrate molecules. So here's a little example of an energy diagram, which we spend more time with later. And you can see they're showing that it takes energy to break the bonds of this glucose molecule and the oxygen molecules and then energy is released as new types of bonds form, carbon dioxide and water molecules. Again, this is all things that we'll revisit in the future, but it's good to have an introduction.